good to see all you guys. Hope you're doing well as well, Tom, in New York. And I trust can hear me right now. I think we got – are we two for two on these intros, Tommy? Are we good to go? Can you hear me, Mad Dog? <laughs> all right. We got it. We got it. Feeling pretty good. I don't know why that was more nerve-wracking than the first time. I think through the first time we went over it so many times, I was like, oh, it's got to – I don't know. I can't I can't screw this up, but this time around, I was like, maybe I could, maybe I could, but I didn't, and we're good, and we're that much closer to uh, the Spring Showcase. You know, kind of funny, by the way, yesterday, guys, as uh, we get into the show, I, I, I couldn't help but laugh at some of the comments from uh, Mike Norvell after yesterday's practice. You could tell they're just ready to get moving on this showcase. Uh, in fact, quote, it's not a game. It's a showcase. The main part of the scoring will be in the uh, grand finale. It'll, it'll be a lot of fun just to see how those guys get out there and compete. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a guy that is trying to warn fans like, hey, uh, friendly reminder, spring games kind of suck. They're great to be at because you're with friends and you get to see the athletes and you get to lay your eyes on people perhaps that you haven't seen yet before, which is important. And But just in terms of the competitiveness of, of a game, yeah. It's well, not, not as much. Of course he's lukewarm on it because you don't run live special teams, you know, and he loves special <laughs> teams and they never run live special teams in spring games. Uh, it'll be compelling though, because you have the depth and you have youth and you have position battles. And I would think as Florida state coaches chart what they see in practices and scrimmages. And in this particular event on Saturday, this one gets the most weight of, all right, this is the closest thing to game pressure that you're going to feel. We've got an opening for a job at safety. We've got an opening for a job at linebacker. How do you, how did you react during the showcase? I'm going to weigh that more heavily than a random Tuesday practice in week two of spring. So that's the thing that they're looking forward to. The issue, the, you know, the damper on this proceeding is that he announced yesterday that you're not going to have Brock Glenn or Luke Cromenhawk. And damn it, man, I, like Trevor Jackson's a nice player, but a big draw for a lot of people, including me. I wanted to see how Luke would have handled this setting, and it's such a shame that we will not see him. Yeah, I don't know why. I saw the reaction on our boards. If you're on the warchant.com uh, website there, if you're a member and you're you're going on and looking to see what people's reactions are to that news, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd think in some cases that it was catastrophic. I just don't worry about it. I figure that I've seen – now, again, that's me because I'm out there and I've seen enough from those two quarterbacks in particular to know that they're on the right track. And, yeah, Kromanok, that would be a different deal because we've seen Brock Glenn in actual games. And, yes, he didn't fare well in really unforeseen and unfortunate circumstances. But you you saw enough to know the throws are there, the athleticism is there. Obviously, he had opportunities last year in practice as well, uh, save for when he was down with injury, to know that that's moving in the right direction. Croman Hawk would have been nice for people that haven't been able to lay eyes on a big, strong kid with a big arm. But I don't know that I would have learned anything more than I know already. I, I guess I'm being selfish in that sense because a lot of people have not seen him. I just, I'm not worried about it. I, my, my, you, we get to this stage of spring practice, my mind shifts invariably to nobody get hurt, no more people get banged up, get, get through spring. I, You know, the other part of it, and I didn't play four years of college football. I played one, but I'll tell you this. I hated spring. I thought it sucked. I just hated it. I think the players hate it too. It's just not fun. It's like, yeah, out here busting my ass. We're not playing a real game at any point. This stinks. I feel like the way you describe spring is the same every year where you're excited for it. You're glad to see it. We get the access to practice. And by the end of it, you're saying this, yeah, I'm, I'm over it. I'm, I'm over this particular process. I I'm not because there's competition. <laughs> yeah, there's no, competition. There is. It starts to wane at this time though, Tom, like the competition, the good days, the brutal intense days of competition are kind of behind them. Like I don't, they're not going to war in the spring showcase, buddy. In some respects, yes. In some respects, no. But this is you're right. You're right to call yourself out and say this is selfish because you do get to see practice. I'm, I get excited for other people to be able to see what we've been talking about, what we've seen with our own eyes. And I just I think it's a shame that a lot of fans who are excited to see Luke Cromanhawk gunslinging from the three quarter. I mean, he's got a weird delivery, kind of whips the ball around. I wish that they could see that in this particular circumstance. You know, we were as the fans were for Jameis. And his spring game, his infamous spring game, 
yeah. have shot you know the expectations and the stock through the roof because Jimbo didn't give us access when we got to see that that was really something and it's something that now 11 years later we still remember and we still talk about I just want as many of those moments for the people as possible. I know what DJ you can do. I know what Luke can do and Brock and Marvin Jones Jr. But you want the people to see Jalen Lucas. You want the people to see Malik Benson and his. And they're going to. Athleticism. Yeah, they're going to. They're going to see him. I mean that. That's what I mean by the, the quarterbacks being down, the backup quarterbacks being down, the true freshman quarterback being down. I, I don't really care. They're going to get to see DJ you. That's all they want to see. Let's be honest. Now, yes, I, I again. If he were out, I mean, given that that guy projects to be the starting quarterback, if he were out, I think that would be a bummer. I would fall. I'd let that fall into the category of, oh, well, damn, man, what are we doing here? That's the guy that's going to be starting. This stinks, but he's going to be there. And Jalen Lucas is going to be there. And all the guys that, you know, Jalen Brown's going to be out there and, and Benson's going to be out, you know, like a lot of the guys that you need to see something from and want to get excited about because they've been mentioned so often. They were high profile transfers. They've made an impact already in spring. There have been many post-practice interviews where Mike has referenced those players specifically as turning his head and flashing. All those guys are playing. As far as we know, every one of those guys are playing. So I just don't get as bummed about it, I guess, you know, and uh, no, listen, it's, there's nothing. The part about this Kyle Kyle's corner here, writes in the uh, Heiselinko law firm chat. I'm taking my six-year-old for his first FSU game, quote-unquote. He's really excited and will love it. I'm going to meet fellow fans and find good people. First time back at Doak since Jimbo. That is exactly what this is about. You are correct. That that The game day itself is about what Kyle's Corner put in the chat. Getting your kids out there, meeting up with people that you meet up with every year for football, that you've tailgated with for years, that you haven't seen since the last season wound down in devastating fashion, you know, that the, uh, you know, the, the, the chances to get together have waned because everybody goes back to their lives when football season's over. They don't have this, uh, you know, pseudo biweekly trip or whatever it is in some cases to Tallahassee where they can meet up and do all those things. This is an opportunity in the midst of the drought to be able to do that. But I don't think anything that happens in a spring game Unless it is a battle. You know what you described, Tom, with Jameis, that situation was truly unique because that was the can't miss five star. Everybody on earth wanted that quarterback. This was all before transfer portal stuff existed. This was before NIL. This was when recruiting was the way it had been for a very long time. And once we had won the services for that kid, everybody had heard about this boy wonder that knew the playbook and could do all these things physically that so few could at that age. So everybody was clamoring for a glimpse. What would he look like? And of course, he throws a touchdown pass to a walk on wide receiver over LaMarcus Joyner on the first pass of the spring game, which just adds to the legend. Right. But what about this spring game or really any of the others before or after that would ever live up to that? That was a unique set of circumstances. It was, and it was an open quarterback competition, too, where Clint Trickett was the veteran and Jacob Coker and Jameis Winston were the two younger players that were vying for time. So an open quarterback competition does lead for the most intrigue in a spring game, even if it's not, you know, replete with a player like Jameis, somebody of that caliber, because then there are stakes. You know, it, it won't get decided in the fall. It didn't get decided until the fall as to who Florida State's starting quarterback was going to be. But you feel like there are real stakes in the spring game. It's not about the Garnet winning or the gold winning or who, how many simulated points one side gets. It's about who's going to win a job and who's going to make a, put a marker down for everybody to think about over the summer and say, this is going to be my job. Now, that is going to happen on Saturday for a lot of other position groups. It's just not that it's not going to be for quarterback. And the thought is, you know, Brock is a really good player. What you saw from game one to game two, the growth there, the good moments in practice, it's worth getting excited about. But I mean, it's going to be a battle for the primary backup job this fall. And it would have been cool to see those two young players, those two young quarterbacks get out there. So when DJU is not on the field, you're still on the edge of your seat. Now, Trevor Jackson is not a, a pure walk on type player. Dude, that, he's not nothing, man. That's a correct. good play. Correct. So th there's that extra level of intrigue is there. It's just it would have been a whole lot extra if you got to see Brock and you're like, oh, man, I got to catch my breath. I just watched a great series from DJ. Here comes Brock. Here comes Luke. It, there, there's still going to be some stuff out there. It's just not quite as glitzy and glamorous as it could have been. 
Uh, Mike went on to say, I just am picking off quotes here from yesterday's post-practice interview. The offense started off well. Defense responded very well. Still have some communication things to work on. Rocklin and Luke Cromanhawk will both be out the rest of the week. They're dealing with some minor things. Trevor Jackson has done well getting the two reps uh, this week for the last few days. Thought he's done some very nice things. DJ continues to grow. Malik Benson looked really great today. He goes on to to talk more about Malik Benson, by the way, and, and what he is for this team. He talked about um, you know, what he loves about him is that he's been a great fit for the program. I think he's right about that. I've seen some of that. Um, it's been it's been fun kind of watching that, by the way, and, and the way that that young man approaches this with such a maturity, a very high maturity level. Um, but it's funny, all the rest of Mike's quotes sound like a guy who's ready to kind of get through this, and I don't mean it that way, but it just – he knows they're winding things down. And as he said, they didn't have a scrimmage this week. And even this showcase is not a scrimmage. So, you know, I think they're just trying to kind of wind things down here. Most of the intensity is, is different, but what do you make of him commenting on all these tight ends? And wouldn't it be funny? Jackson West is truly emerging as a guy that has an opportunity quote. I think he has a chance to have a great year talking about Jackson West. Very excited about that room. He can be as good as he wants to be. Look, man, Jackson West uh, it looks like an Adonis. He's a guy that we've had high hopes for for a while. The tight end room is oddly one of the more intriguing rooms, one of the more intriguing, intriguing segment groups on the entire roster because we have some question marks. He brought up Landon Thomas, quote, he's going to play for us this year. Absolutely. There's no doubt Landon Thomas as a receiver is going to play for them this year. On Brian Courtney, he's taken some big steps. Okay. Uh, and then on and then on uh, Kyle Morlock, he continues to push. I don't even know what the hell that means. So they're th- th- kind of just generic remarks about the tight end room. You think they go out and grab one? Oh, I, I think it depends on, you know, best player available uh, against the roster crunch. I don't think that they're going to prioritize it at the top of the list. But uh, as we've discussed, if you're going to find a game changer uh, and it's at tight end and you could find a rotational player at linebacker or receiver, take the game changer and go get a tight end. Uh, I've got a couple of notes about two of those tight ends from last Thursday's practice. Uh, Landon Thomas had a pancake block in the open field against a large man. And that was very impressive for a true freshman. And then Jackson West, I put snarl, mean. He does play play with an extra bit of edge. The question for Jackson, and good as he wants to be, good as he wants to be, or uh, for Mike Norvell, I think it's about catching the football. It's about the ability to catch the football. He does have the other stuff down. I feel better about inline tight end blocking after seeing a couple of practices of Jackson West this spring. So in short, I don't think they have to. Um, but if they're getting to a place where let's say they grab an interior defensive lineman and now they've got another couple of spots and the best player on the boards at tight end, I'd be interested to see if they bring somebody in for a visit at the very least. Yeah, me too. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, uh, I've been, well, first of all, with the way that Florida state has utilized the portal and the way Mike Norvell and his staff have vetted the players that are available from other teams that have entered the portal this process becomes more intriguing for people who follow Florida state and root for Florida state and care about the roster building at Florida state than virtually anywhere else of the programs that are playoff contenders. I would contend that that is true. The exception might be if you wanted to push back on that, if you think Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss are going to be a playoff team, which I never do. I never think they are. So I don't really, I mean, I always, every year, there's a lot to that. People blow it up and I'm like, yeah, they'll lose three games, whatever. Uh, But, but that said, they have gone crazy in the portal and they've had a a good run to the point where people have the audacity to refer to him in some way as a portal King. Sweet Jesus, folks, pay attention to what you're doing here. Ain't no bigger portal King in the land than Mike Norvell. It's not close. Yeah, man, you got to parlay that into something. Like that's great that you might win uh, some of the rankings on some of the systems, but you got to parlay that into uh, some kind of banner, something, something close to an undefeated run. I mean, come on, man. 
Lane loses games. I'll never forget the the SEC CBS game where he said, "Get your popcorn ready," and he flipped the mic or he flipped his hat off or whatever. Their ass beat by like thirty five. Yeah, clown show. Get out of here. Don't if you're gonna do that, you better roll because that is. If I'm negatively recruiting Ole Miss, I just show the kid that clip and say, "Look at this fake. Look at this fraud." You might score forty points a game against Mississippi State. Congratulations, you won an Egg Bowl. Other than that. You're not doing much of anything. Come play for me instead, son. Restrictions people want to know about, Tom, before we break. Is it true we can't contact players in the portal until Sunday due to the NCAA violations? That is in the Heisa Linkle Law Firm chat from Justin. And uh, I did not do my due diligence to where I feel secure answering that. Is that accurate? Uh, I have a text from yesterday uh, that uh, I believe that is indeed. Accurate. You know what I think about that, and it's easy for me behind a mic to say these things. I'll fully and readily admit this, but I wouldn't abide by those rules. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't adhere to those rules at all. Well, I would, I, I would contact people uh, through a third party if I had to, which I, you know, what call me jaded, everybody, but I suspect this is the kind of thing that happens anywhere and everywhere. And I would say, like, there was a player, for example, if there was a really good player that I thought was going to be a huge fit for us at a certain position, and I intended to reach out to him, and his name is now in the portal, I'm still finding a way to reach out to him, I promise you. It won't be, It maybe won't be some long, protracted uh, give and take. Just a hang in there. Hang in there before you make that decision. Uh, there'll be a call coming in, you know, Sunday at midnight. Y- yeah, I-, I think you'd, you'd have – contact through a person who knows the contact is coming. You wouldn't, you wouldn't talk to the kid because look, all it takes is a kid to, to not be thoughtful in a moment on an interview in an interview setting. You say they contacted me with on three. Well, I've heard from Florida state, like eh, you're dead. Can't do that. Can't have it. So I, I think you, you probably talk to an intermediary so the kid can never sure. say and, and slip up and say, oh, I, I've heard from Florida state. I'll be visiting them next Tuesday. Like, you know, that's just that's not going to fly. I agree. It seems silly. We'll work around it. Um, Florida State's a destination, so that's the good thing. Maybe a couple of years ago, this would have hurt more because we're not proven, but because Florida State is proven, it's an assembly line to the NFL from the transfer portal. You're going to make a lot of right. money. I think kids are going to wait to make a decision before Florida State, uh, you know, decides to call or not. Especially if somehow they were to be alerted that the school was interested and. <laughs> <laughs> if somehow that message got back to them, not from us per se, but as you said, from some third or fourth or even fifth party, somebody that obviously uh, allows for plausible deniability the way that political pundits do it, right? I mean, you got to have plausible deniability, and I, I would. I'd have all kinds of plausible deniability throughout the country waiting on me. I'd, I'd have You'd never bring it back to me, but I would be able to talk to whoever the hell I wanted to talk to. This is DiVincenzo. I haven't taken biology in three years. What are you doing at my locker? <laughs> Go Knowles, Ted. Go Knowles. <laughs> How great is that, right? I mean, come on. What are we talking about here? It's nuts. Chef Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Attention Florida, are you a victim of an auto accident? We introduce our live chat sponsor, Heisen Leica Law Firm, dedicated to representing injured clients statewide. If you've been in an accident, call Heisen Leica Law Firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Heisen Leica Law Firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeisenLeakaLawFirm.com. Heisenleaka Law Firm, your advocate in times of need. I can tell you 
that there is no such thing as perfect timing. So take the first step towards your new home and let me show you what that really looks like. Chances are very high that you'll be very surprised at what I can help you do. When rates go low, prices go high, and that home that you've been eyeballing could be gone. If you're wondering how the drop in interest rates is going to affect your payment, give me a call. I'll be more than happy to show you all of the options available to get you into your new home. And for every single loan that we close for a fellow Noel, I will personally donate $250 per closing to the battle's end. Let's do this together and let's keep climbing. Call me today at 954-369-6171. That's 954-369-6171. Or you can find me online at loansfornoles.com. That's loansfornoles.com. Equal housing lender. NMLS number 373031. Get excited about your home design with Tallahassee Lighting and Decor, where you can discover an incredible selection of lighting fixtures, exceptional furniture, and unique decor for any style and any home. At Tallahassee Lighting and Decor, you'll get the chance to consult with one of our design representatives to curate the perfect space to fit your home and lifestyle. Visit Tallahassee Lighting and Decor today. Proud sponsor of Patty's Playhouse, Saturdays at 11 a.m. on Real Talk 93.3. Find out more at tallylighting.com. That's Tally Lighting. I'm Franklin, and I've been a Pulse Thermite technician for well over 10 years. Working for a great company like Pulse Thermite and Pest Control is a blessing for my family and myself. I get tremendous satisfaction knowing that the work I do helps protect most people's biggest investment, their homes, the place where they raise their families and build lifelong relationships. Pulse is a company that stands behind their commitments customers and employees and that makes me proud to represent them i'm jay having the privilege to work with people like franklin and all of our employees is truly an honor there is no doubt that the staff of paul's termite and pest control is the best in our industry all of our people are local and local really does mean something we're north floridians our kids go to school here we shop here we build relationships here and we honor our commitments to all of our customers, thanks for trusting us to protect your family, pets, and home. For the elimination of termites, any other pests, and a greener lawn, too, call Paul's. We'll get them all. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. So, you know, uh, I only don't half joke about what I was just saying a moment ago. I'll get back into that here in a second. Tom, we had a question in the Heisen Legal Law Firm chat that I do want to answer because it involves the events that are going on this week. And if you want to push it, Back on the big screen there, John wrote, is there a way to meet up with you guys before the spring game? So you guys driving around, listen up. Those of you in the chat, there it is. It's right before you. Um, so tomorrow we're doing a charity show for the second harvest of the Big Ben. And last year we did this. This is not a way for you to meet up, but it is a way for you to help. And we really appreciate those who uh, came through for us last year. And uh, I think we raised quite a bit of money, as I recall, last year we had a a goal of like, I think our goal was pretty minimal, like 4,000. I think we hit the, uh, over eight, which was awesome. So uh, if you guys could ready uh, man the ship and be ready to go tomorrow, that'd be great because we're going to do it again. Help these fine folks who do an amazing job of uh, feeding, educating, engaging uh, for those that need it. And, um, and that'll be helpful. And then Friday, uh, I will tell you, is uh, the show one to three. Five o'clock is the corner pocket bar and grill meet and greet. Uh, we'll be there really. I, I often say it's less than a meet and greet. I don't know if I feel comfortable like people. Uh, what I mean by that is we're not famous. We're just radio dudes and, and all that. So just come hang out and have a couple of drinks. Let's just chill and talk football and uh, let me get to know you. Uh, it'd be great. Swing on by if you can. And really, I can tell you there's a couple things you can do there with that. I'll get to the pregame show and uh, the Hotel Indigo meet and greet as well. Uh, but if you come by tomorrow to the CP on Appalachia or Friday, to the CP on uh, at five o'clock. Come on in. You you still have time to do both. The other big event is what's going on with the battles in at the moon. 
Mike Norvell will be there. That event goes from 5 to 7.30. It's only $40. General admission tickets uh, available. VIP sponsorships, just a couple still available. And the proceeds from the event benefit the Battles in. And they're going to have, I know Irish Chappelle, our own Irish Chappelle, will be part of a panel uh, of people that, you know, on the beat, that cover, that talk about their observations of the spring game. I know they're going to be, some some former players, maybe even a couple of current players. Uh, there's also going to be an opportunity to bid on some items that that are unique uh, from Florida State and in a silent auction. So that'll be really cool as well. Uh, a lot of things. If you want tickets to that, go to thebattlesin.com. But there's a way to make this an awesome Friday, and it starts by swinging by the CP and saying, "Hey, having a cold one? Let's chat it up. Make your way on over to the moon afterwards." be part of that state of the Knowles event, if you will, from the battle's end, and then cruise on into Saturday knowing that, yeah, there'll be a pregame show. Tom and myself, as always, responsible for that pregame show. We'll do that at noon, right in the middle of the day. You guys are sitting around tailgating, having a good time, uh, munching on some Zaxby's, and you're thinking to yourself, all right, this is perfect. Throw on Jeff and Tom. Let's get their thoughts at what they saw throughout spring and what they expect today and maybe a little bit of a projection for the next season. And then at two o'clock right after we finish that pregame show, I'll be making my way over to hotel Indigo and uh, where we go for all the games on Saturdays throughout the course of the year. We're up there on that top floor. It's always a lot of fun. It's a breathtaking view. The weather's beautiful. They'll have drinks and we'll just hang out. And then you can make your way on into the stadium. It's really nothing more than a hangout, uh, which will be great. And then you go on over into the stadium and you watch the showcase. And then after the event is over, even more goodness. This is what you can do when you have a big staff, and it's the best staff there is covering Florida State Athletics. There's a post-game call-in show. Guys can all kind of talk about what it is you saw, what it is you liked, what it is you're concerned about, whatever it might be. Post-game call-in show, 10 to 15 minutes after the showcase. That's Tom and Gene. They do a great job, and they are – uh infinitely patient and they would take calls for days. It goes on forever and ever. Really. It takes the kind of kindness and patience. Only Tom Wang and Gene have to do that post game show to the length that they do it. And I commend them for it. We've got good callers, man. This is, this is not not callers. I'm I'm just saying, man, that could go on for days. There have been games, man, where you're just taking calls from people bitching about the game. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> not not many after a 19 game winning streak but uh yeah the yeah. uh i will tell you the orange bowl one was a little tough that was a tough yeah. post game show you what is to- there to talk about after that game it was such a non-game a non-starter yeah. it's like it's indicative of nothing you had a guy questioning the culture of young men the heart of young men whether or not that they actually believe in standing up for their teammates i mean i was like oh boy okay no, uh, you know, now let me tell you something on that since we can reflect a little bit here. Look, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And I hate, you know, I mean, I'm 52 years old. So I'm probably part of that much older generation that looked at that and thought, man, that ain't it. That's not what you do. But I also am, am modern enough to know and wise enough to know to take a step back from those feelings and really consider the situation. I also think, and I don't put blame, we talk about, I, take shots at callers or whatever. I'll be honest with you. I kind of pitied a lot of people who did not understand the depths to which, and there were a lot of people who did not know because we weren't allowed to talk about it, Tom. And so this isn't their fault. I knew the second they got snubbed that that game was always going to be an unholy ass kicking and set it on the air. I even kind of hinted that if you were a sporting guy or gal, and you had it in your heart to do, if you could somehow do it, you know, 14 ain't nothing to give with Georgia is what I was saying. I I said that on the air. And here's what I was thinking. Not only did you strip away the meaning of the games to where those kids had nothing to fall back on and and believe in because they uh, they were cheated out of what was rightfully theirs, 
but also, and for the first time ever that had happened, that a Power 5 undefeated team and conference champion got snubbed in that manner. It's never happened. So easy for all the fans of all the other teams that have never had it happen to them say, oh, why don't you just buck up? Why don't you just accept it and understand that you can send a message? There ain't no message being sent in that situation. It's an exhibition game. That's what's happened to these damn games. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality, and people don't want to deal with that reality. That Orange Bowl didn't mean anything. So once that happened, and we knew the depth to which that team was hurt, it was never going to be a contest. I knew of at least nine players that needed either major to minor procedures and a whole host of other players that had to get right before turning the corner and competing and performing at the very best of their abilities to go make money. They were going to have to they were going to have to get their bodies in perfect condition so that they could showcase what they were in order to get drafted. So it was a perfect recipe for what we saw in that game. But there were a lot of people who just didn't know and it felt like oh well seven of these guys who were starters or 10 of these guys or 15 of these guys or whatever who were starters that said no, were just doing so as if they were pouting. But it was so much more than that. Yeah, it was. There, there were some cases of straight opt-outs. And I don't blame – the way I said it then is the way I feel now about it. I don't blame anybody for how they react to that situation. It's unprecedented. It's totally unprecedented. You don't go undefeated in college football and be in a position like that with four seats at the table, that you don't get one of the four seats. Like, that's just – it's crazy. Now, it also didn't take, even though, you know, we're in the media, it didn't take a, a rocket scientist to see how banged up this team was, given the injury reports uh, down the stretch in November for the Florida game, for the ACC championship game, and some of the guys you see limping around the football field, Tatum Bethune having to leave the field, and he's missing for drives in the ACC championship. He comes back, and he has the heroic drive where Florida State is pinned back in a short field. And by himself, he gets a four, he gets a stand. I mean, it's unbelievable. And you knew what the receiver room was like. You knew that the defensive line was bad, that the offensive line was terribly banged up. We told you in October, November, Maury Smith is playing injured. Look at him. He could barely move out there, but this guy's a hero for us. So, yeah, injury was a big part of that. But so was being told all season long that if you win all your games – don't worry about it. Quit your bitching. If you win all your games, you're going to be in the playoff. That's the message from national pundits to Florida State University. Well, they did that. And then they were left out. And some of those same pundits act indignant about the fact that there's criticism and blowback for going undefeated and being left out. Don't have to relitigate it all. The feelings are still visceral, but they're not as crazy as they were in December. But that was a situation where you're going to question the culture of this program. Well, Look at what just happened this spring, everybody. Everything's fine. I'm sure there was a, a brief period in which the coaching staff held their breath and wondered, but I think that's when we got Mike Norvell after the tour of duty workout, and he was talking, and Josh Storms was talking about what they saw, and this was the most impressive tour of duty that they've seen in terms of investment in the work. I'll bet there was a time in which they exhaled, and they said, good, good. These kids, they got right back on the horse, and I think that they love this team for that. It'll be very interesting to see. Uh, how Florida State, you know, we're not, I mean, it's April, but this is really the last month where you don't have this nagging, biting feeling about football in the air. It's strange. It happens every year. You know, Tom, I begin sort of the serious conversations. Now, we take some time off like everybody else does over the summer. I'm not, I'm not any different than anybody else. I've got kids in school, and when they get out of school, it's the opportunity you have as a family to go and visit Perhaps go to New York and see your buddy Tom, his hey. lovely wife Jamie, and hang out and go see some things the kids haven't seen and drive over to Philadelphia and do some things as well. Yeah, that's going to happen because that's our time. But I'll be honest with you that outside of that little realm of vacation time we all try to take, a beach here or there, uh, a historical place, or maybe even if you're lucky enough, a trip overseas, whatever it might be that you have planned with your family, outside of that, man, once it turns to May, you're kind of thinking about, all right, it, it all happens so fast. It does. And I've made jokes about it for a long time. Oh, it May, it's practically June. When you're in June, it's football. You know, we, we, we do this all the time. But I'm really fascinated to see, A, not only how we play, and I think Florida State's going to play well, but B, how is Florida State spoken about 
Not that I need any favors, not that I am begging for, pleading for, anything like that. I think as time has passed, a lot of people, including arch enemies, took time to take a step back and think about how hideous what took place and in, 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 in how hideous that was, how bad it was for the game, the integrity of the sport. And, of course, they can just say now, it's not going to matter. There's 12 teams. It's not. Nobody's ever going to go through that again. But, man, that kind of wrong lingers yeah. and reveals an ugliness and an underbelly that it was exposed. It was suspected, but then, then exposed in a way that it never had been. And it also painted certain people in a certain light. Yeah. And it'll be very interesting to see the response from those people. Yeah. And if we'll if we'll excise from the discussion, the nuts and I'm talking about the fans, like the nuts who, you know, the threats and those people oh, that's, that should never happen. So, of course. Not. Right. Let, let's just excise that from the discussion and say, you people are crazy and we condone none of that. Any, any I, reasonable fear. Yeah, I know. I know. Go ahead. It feels like the Jameis thing. Like, I got to say this part so I, I can say, say this every part. time. Yeah, yeah. Just if you're going to go to a game day this year, I wouldn't. I'd go to a war chant game day. I wouldn't go to a game day. Just bring a sign that says Herbie is insecure. That's it. It's a simple thing. It's a simple thing because the insecurity of the national pundits rose to the surface. Those who almost like they felt guilty about something made no sense. Made no sense. Well, I watch 10 to 15 live games a week. Really oh, crazy person stuff. Yeah. So you're talking about 50 hours of football consumption when you work Thursday nights for the NFL. No, you, you, it's an overstatement because it is a thou protest too much moment. It's insecurity. It's insecurity because you know something wrong was done. Something, whether it was by your hand or by somebody else's hand that you have to defend because you're a shill, something wrong was done. And you might have said something that maybe you didn't even mean in November, but people are going to hold you to it because it's on camera. And what you said came true after you said it on camera, on your show. So that's the thing where he's not the only one. There are some others who feel awfully insecure about what happened to Florida State. We know what happened. Either they can't admit it or they won't admit it to themselves. But if you're going to go to one of those settings, just a simple sign. That's neither mean nor cruel nor strange. It's just a statement. And it's true because people like him can't stop talking about the issue. They can't let it go because they can't believe that people don't like them. Well, newsflash, guys. People do not like you at all because you were the front men for what happened to Florida State, something completely unprecedented. And that's not going to change for a long time. No, I don't know that. It, I mean, I feel like it's irreparable, right? I don't feel like that it can be overcome. I, there's a one day you and I, and, and we do this too often, I seriously one day want us to sit down and kind of get into the nuts and bolts theories of now we, we all know the easiest thing to point to. And, and, and I think it's more nuanced than that, but man, I I've got some thoughts on what I think happened and how things began to kind of spiral a little bit. And I think to some degree, there are certain people involved in all of that, that began to get very uncomfortable where that was going. And it was too late. Yeah. They were already along for the ride. They'd already agreed to play the game. They were carrying water, and now you're screwed. There ain't no going back. And it's it's like when you go back to the committee and we look over at a certain individual representing NC State, there they are for the ACC. I, how do you not recuse yourself? How do you not walk out of that room when you see what's about to go down and say, I will not be part of this? I will not be part of what you guys are about to do. I see the writing on the wall. I can see the way this is being maneuvered. And let me tell you something. If you're doing this, you're going to do it without me. And oh, by the way, I'm going to expose it. Yeah. Well, because there's more than just an announcer saying something stupid and being wrong about something. Yeah. There's the stuff behind the scenes, too. Well, and they also, uh, unfortunately, bad optics, guys. Bad, you thought it was a great, innocent moment in college football, but when you show the booth at the end of the Iron Bowl of the ABC primetime crew, yeah, that was a bad look. <laughs> and one of them's jumping around like a schoolgirl who just I got know. told that she's the number one seller of Girl Scout cookies in her class, and she gets to go on a trip to Disney or something along those lines. That's not a good look, especially when, you know, the head coach in Tuscaloosa is now your new colleague. And maybe, just maybe you knew about that. It's the simplest test in the world for this scenario. If Florida State had come back against Florida 
a bad Florida team, a woefully under 500 Florida team, and hit a miracle pass. And Alabama was undefeated and had its backup quarterback in that situation playing a less than stellar SEC East team. But right. ranked in the top 15, mind you, ranked in the top 15, mind you. Right, for the they have yeah, of course not. Yeah. Is Alabama getting left out? Is Florida State yeah. passing them over? How many times out of 100 is that happening? No, no. Oh. Eh, it, listen, one day on the belly and up, you and I will go through every machination of this and have a lot of fun with it. But uh, until that day, we we, we probably can't. Chef Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. is conducting an autopsy to determine the cause and manner of death. Russo had been in custody at the detention facility since February and was housed in a single cell protective custody pod. This marks the second inmate death to occur at the detention facility in less than a week. The first death was a 43-year-old female that died on Friday. This is Rachel Anae with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times this afternoon with daytime highs approaching 85. South winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Cloudy skies expected with fog in spots tonight. Lows dip down to about 62. High temperatures reach up to 86 and foggy early tomorrow, mainly cloudy skies. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, it's 81 degrees. Have you been injured on I-10? I'm Dana Brooks of Facing Brooks Law Offices. We partnered with Roadproof to access all interstate traffic camera footage along I-10 from Pensacola to Jacksonville. Memories fade and witnesses disappear. Securing important video footage now can make sure your claim receives the full attention it deserves. Call us today and let us secure the proof you need to come back stronger. Facing Brooks, 850-777-7777. Offices Destin, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville. haven't seen this guy since what was it oh shoot you two at the sphere in las vegas baby hey how about that man wasn't that fun good show good show everything about it nearly perfect nearly perfect i had everything i could possibly want i wanted one thing couldn't find it and i looked everywhere no cubans what do you mean there no was cubans there was cubans no i didn't see any cubans dude no. i'm sure there was cubans there i mean no. you know no i walked around there was a moment right before the show i thought gotta find some cubans nothing Dude, there's Cubans. There was Cubans. I'm sure there was Cubans. In Las Vegas? In Las Vegas. No Cubans in Vegas. There's Cubans in Vegas, man. Eddie, there were no Cubans. Chef. The sandwich. There were no Cuban sandwiches. You're Cuban. Of course I know there were Cubans there. Oh, the sandwich. Yeah, no, there probably wasn't many there in Vegas. No Cubans. No, not yet. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. I should probably pay attention to the end of the spot block if I'm going to be triggering them. You <laughs> saw the way back. I was like, oh, yeah, that's on me. Hey, really quickly, you saw during the break uh, the... QR code was up, but I do want to remind you about our friends uh, at Tried and True Consulting. Already getting f good feedback. This is exciting. I, I, I like these guys a lot. Obviously, I don't do business with people that I don't at least trust and, and know do good work. But most of the time, things that I'm endorsing or anything I'm involved with, um, I, I like to know that the, uh, that the folks are good people as well. These two guys are Knowles. Tried and True Consulting is a payment and business solutions company. Uh, owned by fellow Knowles, and uh, they're committed to reducing costs and increasing your bottom line. That's a good thing. Nobody's upset about that. The other thing they'll do with Tried and True Consulting is they'll give back 10% of their net revenue to the battle's end. Uh, so it's a it's a trifecta. Make it happen. Scan that QR code. Find out more, or you can call alumni Don or Joe at 844-464-6653, 844 
I'm for Noel. Go tried and true. Uh, yeah, you know, Tom, we start talking about that subject again, and it pisses me off all over again, and I should probably just leave it alone because we've got an upcoming showcase game, and we got opportunities, and Florida State's not going to be stepping back. It's funny that we're at a place where we can just sit around and talk about expectations being playoff or bust for the foreseeable future. I mean, I don't know the next time. Like I, I disagreed with people at the end of the right at the end of the season when it was all said and done. Uh, I didn't. I didn't think there was any way that Florida State wouldn't find themselves once again in a position, and that and that was even with Brock Glenn, by the way, to a certain extent, to win the conference for a second consecutive season and be part of the college football playoff, especially as it was expanding to 12. Then you went out and added all that you added. And now I just think that for the foreseeable future, with the way that they hit the portal and the way that they recruit, and they're getting better at high school recruiting, and they're continuing to add to the staff, I think Ernie Sims will help them. And when you think about high school recruiting, anyhow, I, I just I don't know the next time we're going to be looking at Florida State where we don't think that they're a viable team to make the college football playoff. How about that? Yeah, it's gotten to a, a healthy place overnight, and it is thanks in large parts to the portal in this sense. Setting the line of scrimmage is critical. Setting the line of scrimmage is critical, and the portal has been the thing that's provided us most solutions on both sides of the trenches, you know, on both halves of the trenches. And I hope at some point in the next season or two, I don't think next season is, is going to happen, that the high school recruiting itself provides you what you need to set the tone on the line of scrimmage. I think you're probably going to have to dip in the portal again especially to fortify that defensive front. You're going to lose so many dudes from that defensive front to the NFL this time next year. Um, but we're getting there. We're getting there in high school recruiting. Uh, there are different position groups that could use some more help. But I think the offensive line actually might be a little bit closer to producing good to, uh, starting solutions in the ACC. I think Andre Otto has a real shot to be a starter for you next year. Lucas Simmons has a real shot to be a starter for you next year. They love Jalen Early. Uh, we'll see about some of the other younger guys that are coming up through the ranks. But the portal has allowed for this thing to happen. And then the great part is you've built this reputation, not only as a coaching staff, the collective, the Battle's End, has built its reputation that if you come here, you will be rewarded to the level that you are, the, the market dictates that you are, and you'll be able to go pro because they're going to develop you here and make you better. Jared verse words about John Papuchas and how he helped develop him are invaluable moving forward. You know, Jermaine Johnson got the word out that Florida State's a good place to go. Jared verse talked about refinement in his game. And this is uh, between that and Odell's reputation. This is going to be a portal destination. Just hopefully high school gets to that place where we're, we're doing that without having to dip into the portal each year. Well, and I think you see you see the teams that win the national championship have uh, done that, Tom. They got they have a better uh, record of bringing in elite level talent at the line of scrimmage from the high school ranks. That that's that's where they have almost an impeccable record. You st really see that more and more because it's harder to find that in the portal. Not that you can't, but it's harder to do across the board. I I also think, and I understand everybody's proud of their strength and conditioning program. I can't think of a, a, a program in America that's in a top 10 program that doesn't champion their, their people uh, in that realm. But Josh Storms' reputation has continued to grow and get better as well because players, and it's one thing for fans to say, you know, our, our guys are, are strong and our guys are big and our guys, I love our strength and conditioning coach. I, I've never met somebody who's like, you know, I really hate the strength and conditioning coach over there. Um, you know, it's, it's rare, right? But, it doesn't matter what I think and it doesn't matter what you think or fans think or anything else about the strength and conditioning coach. That is a coach. That's really kind of the, the coach that it, where it matters most. They have the most interaction with the players, the most consistent day to day interaction with the players and the results kind of speak for themselves. You better be at a certain level or you can't compete. You're just not going to be able to physically compete. So it's self-evident whether or not you're doing the job. But you need those players because you spend so much time with that strength and conditioning coach to really have glowing things to say about you as another recruiting factor. I mean, that's really where that comes into play because I think most schools, big-time programs, are going to do their due diligence as to whether or not the guy has a baseline knowledge of how to get bigger, how to get stronger. how to, they, they all have nutrition staffs. They all have – uh, a lot of things at their fingertips to help them improve their bodies. But that guy is the guy delivering the, the theme, the through line, uh, the messaging from the head coach. That's the guy. 
and he has two pupils on the off on the defensive line, excuse me, on the defensive line that have been from the high school ranks that man, when it comes to, you know, showing the flip book to the kids, you know, here's what I can do for you. Joshua Farmer now versus two seasons ago is a completely different human being. And he was already extremely impressive as an athlete two years ago. He is massive now. Just massive. Hey, Patrick Payton. Are the Patrick Payton's offseason? I mean, if you think about it, they're done around New Year's. We got to see them in March. That's two and a half months. That's it. And he and you need recovery time after the season's over. So you back you got basically two months, and Patrick Payton transformed in that eight to ten week period of time. And those are both players that came out of the high school ranks. It's just supremely impressive what he's done and uh hopefully it does continue because the better athletes that you work with the better the results it almost feeds upon itself yeah we you have the greater clay right we always talk about that when you've got greater yeah. clay yeah i think that's absolutely true attention florida are you a victim of an auto accident we introduce our live chat sponsor ice and Lincoln law firm dedicated to representing injured clients statewide if you've been in an accident call ice and Lincoln law firm at 813-803 0733 for a free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Heisman Legal Law Firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeismanLegalLawFirm.com. It's Heisman Legal Law Firm, your advocate in times of need. Office is Tampa. When we come back here in a moment, Tom, I do want to talk a little bit about the transfer portal names that are in, and then you and I have assessed a little bit about what we think will happen uh, in the portal and, and areas that we think Florida State will be interested in going after, but we haven't. Now it's open. Now you and I haven't talked since it opened. Yesterday was headlines. We haven't had a chance to say, okay, here's what I think. You know, this is what we suspect. This is what spring has revealed to a certain extent. So let's see what happens. And uh, I do have an idea about at least two segment groups. I think Florida State will will definitely be going after. So that'll be coming up next. Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. for a credit towards your new one. So why wait? Visit Pinch Penny's 12,000 square foot showroom today on Greer Road and discover how effortless and affordable owning a fantastic hot tub can be. Find out more at TallahasseeHotSpring.com. That's TallahasseeHotSpring.com. Oh my God, what happened to you? You're walking so crooked. Well, I was walking my alligator and I tripped on a cypress knee and I spilled my margarita. Oh my gosh, your margarita. Yeah, I blown my back completely out. I had to ride the alligator home. I don't know what to do. My back's killing me. You're such a poor man. You should know you should go to Finn Chiropractic. Really? You can go to their website and book an appointment and get you in as soon as possible. Go to FinnChiro.com. F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. You mean 24 hours a day I can make my appointment online and pay for it? Yep, right on their website. Wow, and it's discounted? Yeah. All right, that's what Florida man needs to do. No lines, no waiting. Visit FenCairo.com to book your next appointment with a discount. F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. That's F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. It's Fen Chiropractic, where the chiropractors love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Hold my beer. I'm going to Fen Chiropractic. Widden Glass has been taking care of business since 1945. When you call Widden Glass, you're dealing with experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best. Like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures that provide style and luxury at an affordable price. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass. We'll help you design it and install it. Widden Glass, the first name in glass replacement. Call 222-5781. 
There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, Happy Hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall, featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. The latest betting odds and live movements from Vegas. This is your action update. Now, here are your latest lines from our guys in the desert. Tampa Bay Lightning closed out the regular season today at home with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Lightning a dollar thirty home ice favorite. Toronto plus one ten six and a half under the total. Lightning will meet the Florida Panthers in the first round of the playoffs. Florida the seven to one second choice to win the Stanley Cup behind Carolina at plus six fifty. Tampa Bay's odds of winning the Cup twenty five to one. Baseball today. Max Fried of the mound at Houston a dollar forty eight road favorite. JP France for the Astros plus one twenty four nine over at Minute Maid Park. Zach Littell pitching for the Rays today, a dollar twenty five home favorite against Reed Detmers and the Angels. Free betting splits available at vsin.com slash splits. For more sports betting news and information, go to vsin.com. Mike Sun at Real Talk 93.3. If you need bold banners to boost your business, but you're on a budget, think Staples. Posters, flyers, signs, and menus for less? Think Staples. Staples can print anything you need to move your business forward. Now at Staples, save $50 on your print purchase of $150 or more. Same day service available on hundreds of items if you order by noon. And all backed by Staples Print Perfect Guarantee. So it's done right or it's printed again. Free Staples, your local print and marketing expert. And 61 visit staples.com slash print for details. Now. Now your ideas don't have to wait. Now they have everything they need to come to life. Dell Technologies and Intel are creating technology that loves ideas, loves expanding your business, evolving your passions. We push what technology can do so great ideas can happen right now. Find out how to bring your ideas to life at Dell.com. Welcome to now. Zaxby's has been perfecting chicken fingers for 30 years. So what now? Now we go to the sea. Introducing the Southern Fried Shrimp Meal with butterfly shrimp that's perfectly golden fried. A perfect blend of cocktail sauce and Zax sauce that we call Zach's tail sauce. Plus perfectly seasoned crinkle fries, perfectly buttery Texas toast, and even a drink with perfectly pebbled ice. Here's to 30 more years of perfect. The new Southern Fried Shrimp Meal at Zaxby's. Woo, saucy. Zaxby's. I'm Greg Tish here to share one of my favorite TCC stories. In the summer of 1966, Eugene Lamb wanted to stay in shape before leaving to play college basketball in Louisiana. So he jogged to Tallahassee from his home in Midway and helped lay the bricks for the first building on what's now the TCC campus on Apple Yard Drive. Today, he is a longtime member of the TCC District Board of Trustees. It's no exaggeration when we say Trustee Lamb helped build TCC into what it is today. TCC thanks our community for 58 years of support. We look forward to moving into the future together. Hey folks, it's me, Mac and more, spokesperson for Tallahassee's favorite Apple and Mac product store, Mac and more. We all know what Mac is all about. It's your MacBooks, iMacs, Apple Watch, iPhones, iPads, we've all got them. But what's really cool is the and more, and there's a lot more at Mac and more. They can help set up your new gear, migrate and back up your data, teach you new tricks and how to use everything better. And if something costs too much to fix, they'll tell you the truth. There's a lot more at Mac and more. See for yourself at MacandMoreSystems.com. Or you can take it from me, Mr. Mac and more. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 
four, three, two, one. On uh, War Chant TV, you're in the Heisen League Law Firm chat, and I appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, man, we're catching up. Spring Showcase coming up on Saturday. Events this Friday. Big show tomorrow for the second harvest of the Big Ben. We'll go over all of it yet again, but there you see it. Charity show tomorrow. Take the staples out of your wallet. Let's go. Let's make this happen. Let's, let's get to we're going to do some right things here and benefit folks that are in need of our help. And what do we do for folks that need our help, especially with uh, a charity that is as strong and involved and transparent and smart and hardworking as the second harvest of the baby. And we donate, we do the right thing. And that's what this medium gives us the opportunity to do. And you guys have uh, come through time and again, and it's greatly appreciated both by them and me. And I mean that sincerely. So thank you in advance. I always, Find myself a little bit overwhelmed uh, with uh, the kindness of others. That's a good thing. Friday, normal show, one to three, corner pocket bar and grill, meet and greet, hang out, cold beer, talk some football, five o'clock. You're so inclined after that, make your way on over there to the moon. And the event begins that benefits the battle's end, kind of a state of the Knowles event. Um, I believe, Tom, is it perhaps tomorrow uh, Ingram is going to be on the program? That's uh, That's certainly the hope. That is the hope at this time, yes. Well, I don't see why not. I think we should run it either way. There's nothing that we need to have approved. That's nonsense if there's still half-step and then go to hell. Um, let's get to there's uh, We were having a conversation about an event on Friday that benefits the damn team. Stop being uh, – yeah. Anyhow, Mike Norvell will talk uh, on that event uh, – at that event on Friday. <laughs> uh, and uh, and so will our own Ira Chappelle of uh, – Part of the panel there of uh, warchant.com. There'll be others. And then all of you guys, you'll be auctioning. You'll be buying the tickets for just 40 bucks. That's general admission price there. You can be a VIP, all that. Saturday, we've got uh, Hotel Indigo meet and greet. Pre, pre meet and greet, we've got a pregame show, myself and, and Tom. And then uh, you guys are doing the postgame show about 10 to 15 minutes after the game ends. So there's a lot. There is a lot. Hey, so I wanted to note here, and, and I'm going to go segment group here by segment group and tell you where I think they will or will not add. Of course, this is not easily predictable because you don't know which names are going to be in there and what opportunities present themselves. I know that a lot of the times there's sort of a, for lack of a better term, a budget. <laughs> Let's be grownups about this, right? I mean, that there is only so much you can do can't go grab everybody and given the very very selective and uh i think pretty intense vetting process that the coaching staff uses to decide which kids should should be a part of the program and kind of fit in and assimilate nicely within that locker room um you know you got to be careful but i but but there is there's certainly a monetary concern if we're if we're being honest because uh, at the end of the day a lot of these folks that are going to say yes to any school are going to look at what opportunities are there once they're on campus in regards to NIL. And one thing has proven to be true and it was predicted to be true. And Ingram said this to you the first time he ever came on and more we learned about how this was going to work. A lot of people thought it was the wild, wild west. Sure. But they also thought it was just unlimited, right? Like that some renegade dude could decide to be a collective and give $8 million, $9 million, $10 million to a player. But remember, we thought aloud at that time. We were saying, we kind of asked rhetorical questions. What billionaire, what guy worth hundreds of millions of dollars that's been successful in business ever got that way by making terrible decisions with their money? <laughs> like, what is the return on investment from, from the school in which you're an alma mater, right? That's that, That's your school, right? You got your degree. You want to see them do well. I want my guys to be good at football. And I'm worth $50 million. I've kicked ass. 
look at all this money I've made on HMOs. And now, now I, I'm going to make sure that we, I'm allowed to give. I've been in the past. I've been doing it under the table. I get to do anything I want. Now I'm going to give this quarterback $8 million. Are you Bob? You're going to give him $8 million. That seems stupid, but okay. It's your money. Go ahead and give him $8 million. What are you going to do when the next guy wants $8 million or 10? Because he's better than that guy. What are you going to do when the guys that are already there say, hey, wait, what gives? I've given my blood, sweat, and tears to this place for three years. What am I, a bump on a log? You're going to tell me I'm worth nothing? Well, that's what you're telling me when you gave that guy $6 million and he's a true freshman. He hadn't even played college football. I, I broke my leg two years ago playing for you. This is nonsense. Yeah, it didn't make sense. It wasn't sustainable was the argument. We said what you were going to have to do instead and this is why we laughed at people like Ruiz down at Miami. We laughed at whoever that was uh, in the car business in Gainesville. It's always somebody in the car business. Mm. Uh, it was somebody in the car business in Gainesville that was like, yeah, we should give that quarterback $9 million. No, 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 maybe we shouldn't. That sounds stupid. But anyhow, what ended up happening uh, was that it kind of regulated itself as we thought it might. And people who were a little bit more frugal and sensible and understood the value at the position and the depth of talent that was there in any given year understood that the market was going to be set and they didn't need to reset it with some astronomical sum for a player that really wasn't going to make a huge difference in the win loss column. And those that stayed the course and understood that there would be flashes in the pan that were coming and going would win out, right? You were the tortoise. You had to understand that it took a little time, took a little time. You're playing the long game. And Florida State's done that. So what I want to bring up here is about the transfer portal, what they will or will not do, but also recruiting, because that's kind of what we were talking about at the end of the last hour in the sense that Tom and I referenced, we thought they were going to have to get better at high school recruiting if they ever wanted the source of that year over year elite talent in the trenches that you see national championship teams possess, that that was going to have to come from doing a better job of acquiring five-star caliber players at the line of scrimmage. Because those, those aren't a dime a dozen in the portal. Those are hard to find. Most of those kids were brought in in the high school ranks. But I do think what turned out to be true also is that it was a mix and match. That the, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. What Mike did was born out of necessity. Mike knew he didn't have a lot of time, that this is a fickle, angry, frustrated, antsy, desperate fan base that wanted to see some wins and they wanted to see it now. And even those that are rooted deeply in patience and logic and reason and fair mindedness begin to get a little antsy when they're on the wrong end of ass kickings by their arch rival. You can be as rational as you want to be, but then the games happen, as I like to say. Wins and losses happen for a reason. When they bring about a certain way of feeling and emotions are tied to it, no matter how rooted in reason we are. So Mike did the right thing. He said, oh, man, I got I to gotta get some guys in here. And it just so happens that the uh, the world, the universe, has provided me a gift in the form of the transfer portal that we've got an opportunity to kind of flip this roster, which currently is filled with players that stink. And so I've got, at least as it pertains to us winning at an elite level, I'm sure they have wonderful families and they tried very hard, but they weren't good players when it came to big time college football. So he went, all right, all right, I'll grab this guy. I'll convince them of my vision. I'll get a few elite players to take a leap of faith and I'll do it a certain way. I'm not going to promise them wins and losses. I'm not even going to promise them starting time. Although that seems to be something that should be obvious. If you look like Jermaine Johnson, you're probably gonna come in here and play, but I'm going to talk to them about what I really believe is the key to long-term success. And what I really believe is the key to creating culture which is doing things the right way. And this is the way through hard work and through service. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to, because I believe in it because it's what helped me when I was a kid. And so 
it was the thing that may, maybe saved me as a young kid. Without a father figure, I kind of found that in football. And then it taught me how to be disciplined and how to show up every day and be consistent and then build uh, upon the previous day's successes. And he sold that vision and he got enough of those kids to say yes. And then he's a good football coach and he put together a good staff and the X's and O's were good enough that they found a way to get some wins. And they remained faithful to all of that, even in the wake of five and seven in Jacksonville State. All of it, right? They still stayed true. Now, it's probably fair to say they had more time than the fans thought that they did because what was FSU going to do? Just keep firing people and starting over while financially strapped? Probably not. So he probably realized he had a little bit more time than maybe we realized. But I also think it was because what he was preaching was real. What he was preaching was something that you could fall back on. It's the bedrock of success, right? How many times have you heard it? It's true almost anywhere. Hard work works. So that's what ended up happening. And what I think I've discovered, Tom, along the way is that in this new world and the way that he did it, and we marry that for this conversation, I think it's true to say that had Florida State made the playoff last year and they should have as an undefeated 13-0 conference power five conference champion with an elite defense, Had that happened, high school recruiting, which improved this past year, would have improved even more. And what we're finding out is that while it is beneficial to be an elite recruiter with a staff of elite recruiters at the high school ranks with all of those connections, it is no longer the only way to build that success through the high school ranks. Specifically, I'm not talking about just the portal success. I'm talking about the portal success leading to on-field success, leading to high school success and recruiting, even with an average staff of recruiters in the realm of the high school ranks. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a ton to unpack there. You know, there's a sliding scale every year. Lee put it in the, in the Heisen Leak chat a second ago. It sounds like a combo of draft and free agency in the NFL. You know, typically it's a lot cheaper to land a draft pick that can help you. It just is. That first contract, that rookie contract, you can operate with a salary cap that is allocated elsewhere because if your quarterback is a stud, like in Houston, and you've got him on his rookie contract, you could do more damage and go get you a Stefan Diggs and go get you an extra defensive end or an offensive tackler, whatever you need. Like It's the same thing in college football where if we could start churning out offensive and defensive line recruits from our high school classes, develop them into you know all-conference type players, then it's going to cost you less each year to go on the open market to go sustain yourself in the trenches. And you can either in turn use those dollars to go get you more high school talent or to go get you a luxury player, you know, like a a second Keon Coleman. What if you had enough money for a Keon Coleman plus a badass linebacker or a badass, uh, you name it, offensive tackle last year, maybe one of the best guards in the portal that could help you be better at running counter, you know, that's what churning players out of the high school ranks can do for you, can lower your costs. So that's one thing. Another part of the conversation that's completely different is negative recruiting and recruiting against you. And that is we are wasting time having to explain ourselves for being in the ACC. Can you really do it at the ACC level? Like These are questions that Michael has talked about the last couple of years. It's, it's something that this coaching staff can overcome. In the short it, term. But it takes time to explain through that, and you've got to recruit through that. And so you're wasting precious minutes in meetings and text message exchanges and phone calls with kids where you've got to overcome the reputation of the ACC versus Power 2. And it didn't help, to your point, last December that you're left out of the dance because you're not in one of the Power 2 conferences. And so, therefore, it propagates more conversations that you have to have about explaining away the deficiencies of the ACC. So there's a whole lot that goes into it, but at the end of the day, the more you win, I think the cheaper it is overall. The cheaper it is to secure somebody out of high school, the cheaper it is to convince somebody out of the portal. I don't have to overpay to go get me a defensive end anymore. Look at what we've done. Jermaine yeah, Johnson. Also, here. Go ahead. Yeah, so I was just going to say, you also just become a desirous place to be. I mean, that's right. just, just that's just that simple. Yes, you don't have to overpay because you're not Kansas or Kansas State or whatever trying to you know draw somebody into the sticks for an average-ass nothing program. 
Yeah, and so in Tuscaloosa right now, they're talking about how they're behind in the NIL game and how they need to get better at the NIL oh, game. Yeah, there, there was a Saban discount, guys, because he could tell the kids go pound sand. I'll find somebody else that's just as good as you, and he was right. And yeah. that's the leverage that he had that DeBoer does not have. Brian, I want to answer uh, what you said in the chat here. Um, you said, yeah, it's not about ROI. Um, uh, it's about a, having a play thing. What was Dunlap's ROI for getting his name on a thing? Oh, that was a, a, a egotistical legacy dump. That is something that people do. They put their names on the sides of buildings because they're megalomaniacs. They're nuts. They, they, want, they want their name to be seen long after they're dead. They're, they're creating statues for themselves and the like. Yeah, of course, that's, that's silly, but you can't that that's a one time investment, Riley. That's him walking in and say, here, I'll write a check for 90 million dollars or whatever the hell it costs. I don't know what it costs, which is insane. I, I, when people do that, I laugh, but they do. And that's their choice. And thank goodness they do, because then the thing gets built. But the point I'm making is that if I paid eight million for a receiver and I'm worth 100 million dollars or, or 200 million dollars, it's not a one time thing. Am I going to do this in perpetuity? Am I going to do what it takes to continue to fund a roster because I, what, want to play thing? Well, I didn't get rich that way. That'd be stupid. Yeah, th there would be a lot of requests that I would make if I was that particular person. Private jets to and from every game. That's sweet at the 50 that you're trying to sell to corporate America right now. No, that's mine. That's mine forever. Uh, if I want to have breakfast at Dodd Hall, uh, near Williams building on campus in that beautiful library with the stained glass, you are going to prepare a three course breakfast for me every time I'm in for a game. Like they're, they're just, that stuff doesn't happen. <laughs> they keep asking for more and more and more. The good thing is that the market has settled down a little bit. It's going to continue to increase. All markets do, you know, the price of a four ERA pitcher in major league baseball has never been higher. And in the last three years, it costs you a whole lot of money. You'll get that guy at a free agency. But it's stable. You can kind of predict where it's going to be in a couple of years. I think college football's marketplace, this portal window, any other portal window, it's settled down a little bit. You're going to have desperate programs who will overpay every year, but you don't have a wild, wild west. You're starting to get some of the, the sheriffs and the cavalry kind of governing what's going on here to at least regulate the prices somewhat so there's not astronomical rumors about a Jaden Rashada or right, players right, like right. him. I am I am uh I'm fascinated where this is going. I do think that uh once we once the dust has settled on which of the the big time programs, the programs with cachet, the ones that draw TV ratings, once that is settled and you're either under the banner of ESPN or Fox, also known as Big 10 and ESPN, once that's settled, then I think that gets regulated within the Big 2, right? I mean, that that's how that all of a sudden we start to see actual very specific rules for those in that particular realm uh, of competition. I, I don't know how it'll be with all the other conferences that don't fit the bill that aren't competing at that level and haven't decided to opt in or been chosen. But one would think that maybe then that they would fall back under the agreed upon NCAA rules. Yeah, I think what's going to happen is you're right. Once you get to a power two and this thing is expanding until it contracts to the teams that want to play, you can set, for a lack of a better term, a cap on what you're doing, like a, a within reason number, mm -hmm. and that everybody has to agree to or they lose TV rights or whatever it is. Whatever it is that they lose, it's got to be penal enough that they're going to think twice about stepping outside of the system. Until we get there, I think the big boys are all kind of playing ball in the same realm because they realize that we're not colluding, but we're not exactly going to get you know taken behind the woodshed either here. This is a little nuts what's going on in terms of uh, some of the overpaying. But every year there's going to be an Auburn. There's going to be an Ole Miss. There's going to be a, a, a Texas a and oh, one that's pretty enough, yeah. Because they're trying to make a change. They're trying to make a splash. And th I know this very well from being a Mets fan. We got Carlos Beltran and Johan Santana and Pedro Martinez by overpaying because we're the Mets – we have to be the highest offer and then some because we're not the Yankees or the Dodgers. So other programs will do that from time to time and you're going to lose a kid to that. But I think the, the major players are all batting in the same area. Yeah. And it's important too that it not be consistently the same segment group every time that loses a kid to the one that's overpaying, right? Then you got a problem with the guy. Then, then you start going, well, funny how it always happens. This one position group 
It's one thing if it's a receiver, then a defensive back, then a linebacker, then a running back, then a quarterback. If it's always a defensive end, you start going, well, I think we need to look into this. This is becoming a problem because I doubt we're not being competitive, especially in the years when we really need one. You know, it, uh, just just an example. So, yeah, it's a different way of viewing who's doing a good job in recruiting and, and marrying that with what you have to do in the portal when you whiff. It's Jeff Cameron Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio. War Chan TV continues in a moment. Attention, Florida. Are you a victim of an auto accident? We introduce our live chat sponsor, Heisen Legal Law Firm, dedicated to representing injured clients statewide. If you've been in an accident, call Heisen Lika Law Firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Heisen Lika Law Firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeisenLikaLawFirm.com. Heisen Lika Law Firm, your advocate in times of need. that we close for a fellow Noel, I will personally donate $250 per closing to the battle's end. Let's do this together and let's keep climbing. Call me today at 954-369-6171. That's 954-369-6171. Or you can find me online at loansfornoles.com. That's loansfornoles.com. Equal housing lender. NMLS number 373031. conditioning system doesn't check with you before it takes a break. That's why we're always ready to help any day, anytime, anywhere. And with our annual service agreement, there are no overtime charges ever. At Verno Heating and Air, we will always be there for you. Verno Heating and Air Conditioning. Hey, let me tell you about my friends at Tried and True Consulting, a similar owned business that specializes in payments and business solutions. Tried and True's core expertise includes card, ACH, point of sale, mobile, e-commerce, and hosted payment solutions. Tried and True will help you reduce costs and increase your bottom line. That always sounds nice. Whether you're a retailer, restaurant, licensed professional, or service industry, Tried and True is saving you money. Tried and True's expertise extends to payroll, video menu ad boards, IT services, web design, and social media. It's time to make one call and tell the competition to take it on down the road. Call Don or Joe today at 844-464-6653. That's 844-464-6653. When you do business with Tried and True, they contribute 10% of the net revenue to the battle's end. So go Tried and True today. Call 844-464-6653. At Epps Decorating Center, we're your locally owned Benjamin Moore retailer. We're your store for quality with brilliant and durable paints in a variety of sheens and thousands of colors. We're your store for service with one-on-one -on -one advice for contractors and homeowners. We're your local experts and we're here to help with all your painting projects. Benjamin Moore, available at Epps Decorating Center with two locations in Tallahassee. Find a store near you and visit EppsDecorating.com. That's EppsDecorating.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. I'm probably supposed to talk there or I could have hit a liner, but I didn't do either. So now I'm talking. <laughs> oh man. I was just thinking about the fun of all of this. And I got carried away last segment, Tom, and did not get the opportunity to, uh, to go position group by position group as far as where we think they'll maybe go after somebody. But I, I will tell you, um, 
we can do that here and and it'll be fun to do. But before I do that, let me remind everybody that uh, my friends at social kitchen, very best by the way. And this is a, this is a, this is a meat market. Hey, now, uh, amongst other things, unlike any other, this is the elite level uh, steak that you can find and all kinds of awesome recipes. Get ready uh, to be stress-free, ha- hassle-free, and uh, swing by over there for this week's professionally chef put together, order chef trio type, all three meals, these types of things so that if you're on the go, you want to stop in there off of Cary Forest, you can go in and see what I'm talking about at Social Kitchen. They've got Backyard Barbecue, which is uh, barbecue pork and chicken, macaroni and cheese, baked beans, cornbread with cinnamon, uh, cinnamon honey butter. You can get that this week. You can get the mozzarella stuffed meatballs. Ooh, that's that's what I'm talking about. If you can see this picture, you could. SocialKitchenTLH.com. Uh, herbed, uh, that's herbed fettuccine noodles and marinara sauce, Caesar salad plus the garlic butter bread, Tuscan chicken. You can get some shrimp in there too. Good. Forget about it. It's all there. Social kitchen. Swing by Carrie Forrest today. See what I'm talking about. They're delicious. I saw, I just, I just came back to the chat and saw what you had there. The eyes widening and it's good. Um, Okay. Most obvious position you think Florida state will pursue a, a player at to add, maybe not necessarily because they're desperate or anything like that. Give me the position you think that it's uh, no doubt they're going to add somebody. Defensive interior. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, It's just that's a position where you got to have so many big bodies and they wear down. And, you know, unfortunately, it's also a position where usually there are all kinds of bumps and bruises and people miss some time or they're going through some things. And so. Uh, as much as Florida State likes to rotate both interior and edge, it seems to me that they would definitely go out and get a defensive tackle. I don't think there's any doubt there. I do wonder now, though, you know, I don't think they're going to go out and get a running back. Certainly won't go out and get a quarterback. Might they go out and get a tight end? We already addressed that in hour one only because if there's somebody obvious, if there's somebody that has the dual ability to be both a good inline blocker and also receiver and has done it at a high level and their name comes up and they're interested or something like, they might do that. They might. What about wide receiver? You've had some injuries. You've got some guys that aren't proven. Others you're asking to take a big step, but no workhorse that you know can do it at this level that you would turn to maybe – I mean, Jakai is not that guy. He's played at this level and he's been successful, but he's not a one. Uh, he's really kind of just, kind of a gadgety guy. So, so I, that might be one. It could be. They're they're speaking highly consistently about Malik Benson and what he's done. Uh, this is a, an athlete that you could see why he was number one coming out of JUCO a couple of years ago. Why Alabama was interested in him. It's a two way street. Just because you're number one in JUCO doesn't mean Alabama has to take you. They have to see what they like, and, yeah. and you can understand why Alabama wanted Malik Benson to be a part of their offense. So I think he can be a solution for you. I think Ja'Kai can be a solution for you, and then there are some other players like Hakeem who could stand out. But I think it the story on that one will be told by how many dudes enter the portal in the next week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If it's two or above, I'd, I'd place that at, say, a yellow alert. If it's three or above, let's just say it's three, Like I think they're going to add one. If it's two, I don't think they need to. But, you know, if you lose three veteran wide receivers um, to the portal, and I really don't know how many are going to enter, we think there's at least a couple that need to go because there's not enough spots. There's only one football, and and time is running out for several of these players. So, uh, you know, I think that depends on, on the export market at receiver. Wouldn't shock me if you've got three or more who enter that we bring one back. People get uh, uncomfortable trying to name names when it comes to the possibilities of people leaving, but they shouldn't. This is just the way it's going to work, especially as you elevate the level of talent to raise the floor, if you will. You know, the guys that we expect to see play a lot in some capacity this year at wide receiver would be Kentron Portier, Malik Benson, Hakeem Williams, Ja'Kai Douglas. And then it gets interesting because I would have told you Destin Hill, Tom, mm-hmm. 
And then, you know, he's banged up and we don't know if he's going to be available for the fall. So mm. then, then you fall back on what? Vendravius Jacobs, Deuce Span, and Darion Williamson? Yeah. No, I think, I think Darion, Deuce Span, to a degree, Kentron, not, not in a big way. Um, you know, Dre, I think that those are all candidates to go in the portal. I don't mind naming the names because it's just, you, you look at the numbers, you see eligibility, like Darion and Deuce, if they've done enough to command a spot in the, in, at the top level or the second level of the two deep, they probably don't enter. If, if they do put their name in the portal, it's because the time's running out for them and that there's no harm in that. There are no. some there are some cases in which a player enters the portal and it's scandalous and you're like, oh, what's going on there? What's the story there? There are some where it's just time's running out. I want to play football. And that, that's good for all parties involved. You, you're not going to have a chance here. We love you, but you'll have a chance elsewhere. What do you want to do? You can stay here or and, and you could be a reserve. And if we lose a couple of guys like the pit game last year, maybe that's your time to shine. But if you're not yeah. comfortable with that, then ride on out and go play, young man. Yeah, it gets weird. I I really do think though that the the math on that, the number of players that are going to leave at that position, which we identified before spring started, along with running back as a potential, uh, not mass exodus, but certainly a spot where multiple players could choose to leave. And at that time, you know, we didn't factor in the injury to Destin Hill, which I think changes the math now because if I'm one of those guys who's teetering and not sure that I want to leave because I've made progress, maybe not as much as I'd like, maybe I'm not being utilized as much as I'd like. But if Destin Hill, if he's not available to play this year, all of a sudden, you know, what's my role? Do I have another opportunity now to, to maybe kind of change the dynamic for me? So that, that's, that's, that's an area running back is one, two, Tom. Um, now that's, we're trying to do the math to decide where they'll go. We already said they'll go defensive tackle. If they lose a big name at receiver or a significant name at receiver, maybe they go there, especially if there's one that's replete with experience and all that. Um, let's go back to the defensive side of the ball. I see really no way they're going after anybody in the defensive backfield, not a corner, not a safety, no chance there. Maybe if you could find a star linebacker. Uh, I think so. I wouldn't put safety to bed just yet. Um, yeah, I, I think they have options there. I, I, they do. They do. But I think if you found a Keon Coleman, you know what I mean? Like there are some positions where if you found a Keon Coleman type and you've only got a few spots and he's at defensive end or running back, you don't need to go. You don't need to go get that guy. I, I, you have too many here. Mm -hmm. If you found an impact player like that, at safety. I'd look at it. I'd, I'd give it a shot. Corner, no. no there's, way. A star, there's a star out there. Somebody just pointed it out simultaneous to me saying it in the chat. I mean, we've all seen that, right? The, the, the big name out of Texas A&M. Everybody knows yeah. that's available. Yeah. I, I just, corner, I wouldn't. Safety, I would think about it. You know, at least I, it comes down to beyond need. Like, I think defensive interior is a need. But then it gets down to you're doing the math on, well, this guy could be a starter for us. This guy could be all conference for us. This guy's a rotational player. Like, if safety is on that all conference level, I think about it. it. It mattered a lot last year. I'm not saying the guys have regressed. I'm not saying the guys haven't developed, but corner looks a lot more secure than safety to me right now outside of Shaheen. Only other position where I think uh, they would be wise to maybe think long and hard if it's available. If it's somebody that fits again, they're in a bit of a position of luxury than they more so than they've been in the past. They don't have to go out and get anybody right now. Like they're a good football team. We think as is would vie for a college football playoff spot and conference championship. So they don't have to go out and get anybody prior to last year and the year before you felt like, ah, you kind of need to go get somebody. I mean, you know, and there were positions specifically where we went, man, if that is available, I would do it. Receiver turned out to be one of them. As soon as Keelan Coleman's name came out, we were like, woo, let's yeah. go. What are we doing here? Well, time, and time to, time to, run. to your credit, to your credit, I don't forget these things when it goes the other way. I was like, man, are, are we going to, are we going to upset the apple cart here? I think with Kentron, we got a good thing going in the spring. Johnny's Johnny. You'll have some options over the middle of the field. Let's not go crazy for Keon. Let's not like out step outside <laughs> of our process for Keon. And you were saying, screw that, Tom. Don't want to hear it. We're going to get Keon Coleman. And <laughs> exactly we did. 
Yeah. And you were right on that. You were right on that. I don't get them all right, but yeah. No, that, no, was, that was too, but that was, that was a case where you had a guy with a different skill set. We didn't have anybody that looked like that. We didn't have anybody that played like that. And that guy played for a sorry-ass quarterback in a conference that struggles to throw a forward pass. And he still had 700 and something yards. I was like, oh, no, no, you want that. And I'm still angry. I want to point this out. I'm still angry. We didn't get the real version. We were cheated out of what could have been with him. I know we went 13-0. and 0. That offense would have been electrifying for the whole year if he had been healthy. He was a game changer. We saw it through the first four or five games. Well, and, but and, he got hurt. And he's limping around, and he's still an excellent punt returner, even after the injury. Yeah. Like yeah. just that, that tells you the caliber of athlete that that dude is. I know what his 40 time says, but, man, it, when you're able to, with a bum leg, be that as dynamic of a punt returner as we've had since Greg Reed, that speaks to some football skills now. That's just that's a little bit of skill. Yeah, he's strong. He can bounce off of tackles. He breaks arm tackles. He's got great vision. He can make you miss. There's enough wiggle in short yardage situation and, and, and condensed space. Uh, he did all those things, Tom. He was, yeah, he was a good player. He was a good player. That's um, anywhere else, though, before we round out the segment, I, I, I think receiver's a possibility. Defensive tackle, I'm with you 100%. I would go get one, period. I would go get one. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, I'm going to tell you now, I believe they will go get a defensive tackle. There's a chance. I'll tell you this. There's a chance to go get two. Mm. There's a chance. Now, that might be a bit of a luxury. Yeah. yeah. The the building's not on fire. You don't have to get one. You don't have to get two. I think you should get one. And if you've got the right to, then then go for it. Um, We haven't talked about offensive line. Would you would you tackle touch offensive the- tackle? If you get a stud offensive tackle, I'd take it only if it's available and you know it's the right guy. That's what I was talking to about the fit. Sorry, I was about to go to offensive line. I, I would or a or a star center. I, I know we keep trying to replace a guy whose toughness and wherewithal and stick to itiveness and ability is overlooked, and we shouldn't because I feel bad about that, but he's also always hurt. Yeah, you know, this is also an opportunity where if you don't have any glaring needs this year, you can go. I saw James B. in the Heisen Lika chat was talking about A&M's um, safety, even if he's a depth piece as a sophomore. You don't have to go get a one-and-done player this window. You can get somebody that sets up to be a multi-year solution for you. Like, if you could find a tackle that maybe he doesn't beat out Byers or, or Washington this go-around, but you really like him as a redshirt freshman to anchor your offensive line for the next two seasons. Like that's the math that, that the collectives have to do here. That's very difficult. You do have high school recruiting and a budget for a lack of better term there. You've got a scholarship limit that you, you know, you want to work around, uh, work with, then you've got the portal, but then there's this middle ground, which is two and three year portal players. Sure. Maybe the best answer is to go get somebody who serves you a little bit this year, but a lot next year and the year after. Yeah, got to be careful. I mean, uh, we think Otto is going to be a stud. You just don't want to shake up that apple cart, right? I mean, you got a couple of guys that in Simmons and Otto that you feel very, very good about moving forward. So just you'd have to be delicate. You'd you'd have to be delicate. But hey, but listen, we trust them. That's what they've been able to do. It's Jeff Cambridge on 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. You're on. A 911 call just before noon on Sunday about a possible shooting near Happyville Lane in Old Fargo Road. When officers arrived, they found Raheem Poole, 25 years old, dead from suspected gunshot wounds. Anyone with information is encouraged to contact the GBI or to remain anonymous. You can call 1-800-497-TIPS. This is Rachel Lene with your Roll Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times this afternoon with daytime highs approaching 85. South winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Cloudy skies expected with fog in spots tonight. Lows dip down to about 62. High temperatures reach up to 86 and foggy early tomorrow, mainly cloudy skies. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. 
Currently, it's 84 degrees. Power Mill Training Academy equips motivated athletes focused on baseball and softball with the specific tools to reach their true potential. Now, you'll read that if you go to their website, but I'm here to tell you that, look, whether it's your daughter wanting to play softball, your son wants to play baseball, or maybe they just want to have fun and get the most out of their abilities, and that's where Power Mill comes into play. They've got coaches and camps that teach for every level of play for your son or your daughter. To learn more, go to PowerMillSports.com. There is no Bigfoot, Eddie. Would you stop with that nonsense? There's a Bigfoot, Jeff. I wish there were. By the way, I don't want you to point to me as the guy that takes all the fun out of the room. I wish there was the Loch Ness Monster. I wish there was the Bigfoot. I wish there was the Chupacabra. I, all this, all the things. They're all mythical except for the Bigfoot. The Sasquatch. The Bigfoot? The Bigfoot. There's, actually, there's, there's big feet. There's lots of them. So, like, different... You know, breeds like different well, yeah, kinds. There's of, yeah. all, there's like you know families. There's yeah. different families. And, so you know, there's the there's if the, they're in the snow, you call them a sasquatch or the yeti, right? Yeah, and then, the yeti, and, then yeti. and then here in Florida, that's a skunk ape. And you know, they're, but I've never heard that one. By know. the way, why do you think it's real? We would have found them by now. They're the hide and seek champions of the world. <laughs> Nobody finds the Bigfoot. But I think you believe in Bigfoot. I do believe in Bigfoot. You don't believe. I Bigfoot. believe in Bigfoot. Don't look, tell anybody you believe in Bigfoot. I would go look for Bigfoot, but he scares me. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. That's a fun conversation we're having about the positions because each time we have them, I think to myself, man, we're so much better off than we were. So much better off than we were. Goodness gracious. One more reminder. I want to get this out there again for those that don't know. Tomorrow's the charity show. Anything that you can provide, greatly appreciated. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. This is always a great week. We had the tournament at the end of last week. Now we have this show dedicated to the same cause the second harvest of the Big Ben, and that'll be tomorrow's JCS 1 to 3. Every single penny that you donate tomorrow, on uh, you'll see it on the YouTube. Uh, we'll have a way for you to do that. It's very simple, very easy. They've made it that way. Every penny goes to the second harvest of the Big Ben. None of it comes to us. Warchan doesn't make any money. 93.3 doesn't make any money. I don't make any money. Tom doesn't. None of that. Uh, and YouTube, more importantly, doesn't make any money. You guys would love it if I did, but that's not what it is. No, it's YouTube doesn't make any money either. This all goes to the second harvest of the Big Ben. That is tomorrow, and we'll do an actual show, but in between, certainly, we'll we'll ask for some donations and, and, and try to best last year's amazing return. Um, then Friday's show is, uh, uh, again, a normal show, and then we'll go over to the corner pocket for a little – Happy hour get together. Myself, Corey Clark. I don't know who else is going to be there, but it'll be good times. Tom's out of town. I know he'd be there, but uh, we'll be there. Uh, and then you guys, if you want to head on over to the moon for the event that benefits the battles in Mike Norvell will be there panel, including our own Irish Chappell will be there. That that's good stuff. Silent auction items to bid on and the battles in doesn't fool around with that stuff. By the way, you usually get access to amazing things. And of course, as I said, Mike will speak Saturday, got the pregame show myself and Tom Lang. Then a get-together at Hotel Indigo at 2 o'clock. Look forward to that as well. That'll be followed up by us going into the showcase itself. And afterwards, post-game call-in show, 10 to 15 minutes after the game ends. You got that as well with Tom and Gene Williams. All right. I think we're caught up there, Tom. We're all set. Yeah. Man, you got those calories cold. Yeah, I didn't even look at them. I just, uh, yeah, it's it's there. I um, soon will be saving goodbye to the fine folks in the chat because we'll have to go to probables, and I'll get to those in a little bit. Uh, your Mets looking to sweep my Pirates out of town. I'm glad you got to see, and I don't mean to be a jerk, because you guys won the game, and you're up to up, and you're two, up two to one in the sixth right now. It's a good game. Been a low-scoring series. Pitching has ruled the day. I will tell you that um, I was I, I texted you last night. You saw that. I don't, I don't understand what we're doing out here. You got a kid who's going to be in contention uh, for Rookie of the Year for Pittsburgh. His four starts have been – historically awesome for his first four starts of his career. I mean that literally, this is not uh, over the top from, from hyperbole from a pirates fan. Go look at the numbers. He's up there with the all time greats in his first four starts. Um, he has swinging, swinging missed stuff for days through 59 pitches last night. 50 of them were for strikes. Seven K's gave up one hit. I don't think the Mets were going to hit him if we stayed till tomorrow and they pull him out of the game. And I'm like, well, here we go. They're going to lose the game. And they did. It <laughs> 
So I, I texted back. I was like, did, did he have a full spring? And I decided to pull up his game log. Yeah. And and he's been pitching 80 to 90 pitches a start. And, he's been uh, pitching. And, and, Tom, the reason he had a full spring was they wanted to see if he could make the team because he had the best stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, they just drafted Paul Skeen, so we'll see. But he had the best stuff of any of the prospects we had. He was on Keith Law's list of 20 best. And so we're like, okay, can he make the team coming out of spring? Let's see what he's got. He dominated in spring. He made the team. He became our three starter. What are we doing with 59 pitches? I have no idea. Our manager was asked about that last night, and he said, I'm glad that he came out of the game. But now I hope he's okay. He, he wanted to be careful. I hope he's okay, first of all, because that's a strange number. But I, I was glad to see him come out of the game, not going to lie. That slider that he has is okay. the same. It's the same thing as Diaz, and Diaz pitches one inning. But it's 92 falls off the table, breaks into a lefty. That's just it's evil away from the righty. Um, yeah, I was okay with it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I knew you were, and I knew what was going to happen. I saw uh, was it Ortiz or Hernandez? They're the same player that came out for the Pirates. I was like, oh great, well here it comes. Let's give it up. Get ready for a double in the gap. This is going to happen, and then it happened. So anyhow, we'll get to I, rest. That's just you and I having a private conversation on air. <laughs> That's all that is. So we rounded out the positions. Mm-hmm. This is, I mean, the next 48 hours, 72 hours is what we're going to be looking at. I mean, this is this is what you're wanting to see. Yeah, I think, you know, they've got one more practice after the showcase. I wonder when Florida State players, I mean, I know Greedy Vance has already indicated that he was going to go in, went in, all that kind of stuff. But I wonder, at what point do you start to hear more about Florida State players? Is it after the showcase? I mean, is the showcase really going to change your your standing within the program? Maybe it does. Mike Norvell is a very buttoned-up dude, so maybe they are waiting to do exit interviews until after that final practice. But the problem is, you know, it's a little inconvenient for the kids because next Tuesday would be the 23rd. you got a week. <laughs> so, like, you got to turn around very, very quickly uh, they don't allow for extra time that I'm aware of right? in the portal. You know, if you play in a playoff game, you get extra time. You know, If you want to leave Alabama because they wrongfully made the playoff or you went to Michigan and they made the championship game, you were afforded extra time to make your decision. I don't think that happens with the spring window. So at some point, these kids here have to make up their minds. Well, and I would say that nothing about what's going to happen in the spring showcase is an indicator to a kid one way or the other, whether or not he needs to be here. He already knows that. Uh, Hence, Greedy Vance understanding where he sat on the depth chart and where he was in in terms of standing. You know, I, I, I think if you're a kid that's a little on the fence, you probably have every, well, you know, probably you have every right to walk in and say to Mike, Hey, I know the spring game's coming up and we have more practices this, this week, but realistically how do you see this because yeah, i mean yeah. it's a yeah you, you, you got to be fair to the kid i i think in the future if it's possible this coaching staff is going to want to line up the spring like we were talking you were talking yesterday on seminal headlines about baseball and the acc baseball schedule has is already lined up before mm-hmm. we make the determination where we're going to be um you know for the spring football game and so sometimes those don't line up based upon mike norvell's wishes I would think to save themselves some stress and the players as well next year, you'd want to finish your spring game before the window opens. It only seems to be easier that way. This is going to be a helter skelter first, you know, uh, 24, uh, 48 hours. Once the showcase is over for the coach, because they've got to scramble and make phone calls and do all their own work. Goodbye to the folks in the chat. It's been real. Thank you guys. We appreciate you. You guys, have a great day. And uh, now we're going to get better at this. 